ready to get dressed up for Halloween. The Mountaineers and Warhawks have their costumes ready. It is App State and ULM, a Halloween treat, coming up next. And welcome to ESPN College Football from Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana. Appalachian State in town to take on ULM. And a good Saturday afternoon to you alongside Dustin Fox. I'm Bill Roth, and happy Halloween as well. We are in the Halloween spirit <laughs> here in Monroe, and I like your costume. I like yours better. I think you look spectacular. Really? Oh, boo. You have went there? Have some fun. Hey, speaking of looking spectacular, how about App State? After taking really 26 days off because of COVID-related issues, a statement win at home. Well, those 26 days, I think the players on App State kind of got tired of hearing about Coastal Carolina and Louisiana getting ranked inside the top 25. They came out and made a statement performance against Ark State. Zach Thomas embodies everything that App State is all about. And you see, not just through, through the air with his arm, but he can do it on the ground. He had a 60-yard touchdown run. You see it right there. Last Thursday night, dynamite performance. And a dynamite career for Zach Thomas. He has done it all for App State over the years. 26-4 as a starter. He has thrown 55 passing touchdowns. However, App lost its only road game this year. And the last time they played here at Malone Stadium three years ago, it was a, well, a horror show. In the final seconds, Louisiana Monroe's Caleb Evans scrambles and finds R.J. Turner for the game-winning touchdown pass. Monroe wins on this field. I think this still might give App State some nightmares, Billy. They're 0-1 on the road this year. <laughs> How will they perform on the road here today? App State won the toss, deferred. It's option to the second half. The Warhawks will get the ball to start things off on this Halloween Saturday afternoon. What was really interesting was how well App played after taking really a month off. Now, how will they perform away from Boone? Here we go, ball in the air and the game is underway. We're gonna have a kick return for Isaiah Phillips and he gets knocked down on the 15. Well, the one thing that Monroe has struggled with all season long, Dustin, is its offense. Yeah. They have had trouble particularly early. They have fallen behind and fallen behind big in just about every game. They're going to go with Colby Suits again at quarterback. He's the sophomore from North Forney High School in suburban Dallas. It's his third year in the system, but it's his first year as the starter. He's a big kid. He kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Ben Roethlisberger type at six foot three, 240 pounds. He's tough to get on the ground. He's got a big, strong arm, and he can also run with the football. A play fake and a first down throw for Suits. And a deep shot on the game's first play, and it's through the hands of Fret. He should have had that. In fact, he tell you nine out of ten times he makes that catch. Well, I love the idea. First play of the game, take a shot deep. It was a little double move on the outside. They're working against one of the top corners, and Shamar, Shamar Jean Charles on the outside. He gets Charles to bite just a little bit, and that ball was delivered on a on a dime. I mean, that should have been caught. Should have been a big play. Could have been a touchdown. Kind of the story of the season for ULM, right? They make yeah. good plays. They have been terrific till they get to the red zone, and as a result, they are winless on the season. At bringing the heat, here's a handoff to Johnson. His first touch of the day, the tailback out of Herboro, Alabama. You know, it's going to bring up a third and long. I think that's one of the keys, though, for this offense. They've got to get back to the, the ground game. The running attack last season was so much better than it is this year. They don't even have a 100-yard game. You know, they're averaging 96 yards per contest. Last year, they rushed for over 200 yards in eight games. They've got to get the rushing attack going. Let's see if they can do it against a stout App State defense. Coming with the heat again on third down, and this ball is overthrown. Incomplete. So a quick three and out for Monroe. The pass was intended for the tight end, Josh Peterson. And Monroe will punt it away. That's Daniel Sparks. It's our first look at the Louisiana Monroe punter. Malik Williams, he'll be looking up into the sun. You saw him kind of checking it out. That is going to be an issue 
for Williams and anybody that's on that north end of the field looking into the sun particularly early. You can see Williams kind of fighting it, calls for the fair catch and takes it on the 35. And App will start there for the first time. And our first look at Zach Thomas, and he was so good in his last game. And we've been saying that for the last few years, haven't we, about number 12? He's just so efficient. I mean, he does everything for this offense. Obviously, they want to run the football, but he manages it. He can run as well. And, and they've got a great ground attack behind him. Their offensive line, extremely stout. All veterans up there, so they give him tons of time. Uh, just a tremendous football player and an even better young man, the coaches uh, told us this week in our conference call. They'll start from the 35. Bring the tight end Pearson to the left. And they run it that way in a big hole on the first play in a big game for Harrington into Monroe territory. He was finally brought down by Tyler Glass. Well, this Daytrick Harrington kid is just, just really impressive to watch. So explosive. Watch him just get downhill. Great block up front there by the center, Noah Hannon. And he cuts it up for a big game, nearly a touchdown. He almost broke it. He comes off a tremendous game. He had 137 yards in his last game. Looks like a design quarterback run. And it'll be a pickup or five or six for Thomas on the play. He'll have, you know, seven, eight carries a game, design quarterback runs. And uh, just does that. I mean, having that extra element from the quarterback position, Bill, I think it gives you so much more of an added element to your offense. And, and Zach Thomas gives the, the App State uh, Mountaineers just that. Second down, they're calling it four from the 40. Another play fake for Thomas. And a deep shot. And it is picked off. And we're coming the other way. The game's first turnover, and that's Josh Newton running it all the way back. Well, the turnovers are something that head coach Sean Clark was disappointed in last week. And App turns it over on its first possession here today as Newton gets the pick. Well, this is very impressive by Newton. Man coverage down the field. He's in a defeated position, but the speed to catch up and just rip the ball. Wow, how did he come up with that? It looked like... It went off the back of Wells. Wow, what an impressive interception and just what ULM needed to have a spark defensively. Gets him back to good field position here on what was nearly a touchdown. That's a, that's a <laughs> very I thought it was going to be a score, yeah. No doubt. He, I thought he had it. A good throw, and it's a, it's a touchdown. And now here the other way. Here comes Johnson. And he breaks free, and he stumbles, and he's out of bounds at the 42-yard line. I think he may have pulled up lame there. Grabbing his left hamstring, and the young man is in pain on the home sideline right in front of his own bench. And, that, and that's not, not good for this offense at ULM because that, that is a key. As we were talking about, they need to get the ground game going, and it looked right there. It was a wide-open run to the backside, and as soon as Johnson kind of broke into the open field, we'll see it again. Watch great cutback here, good down block, and then right about, yeah, right about there, you can tell as he starts to grab that left hamstring. And he knows it. He's obviously frustrated in a lot of pain. He knew that was a big play, too. They'll look at Josh Johnson on the sideline early in the first quarter. We'll be back to Monroe in a moment. Appeared to pull a hamstring on this run, Dustin. You can tell right as he starts with that left leg, and it's happened to me so many times as a, as a former player when you, you just know you can't do anything about it. You, you kind of naturally reach to grab for it. And, uh, man, that was a, a really a potential home run hitter on that play right there, and it just, it just pulls up, and you feel bad for the kid because he's been through so much, and he's a, a really talented running back. In fact, some of the... NFL scouts I, I chatted to during the week said this guy's got a chance to, to, to potentially be drafted. Um, and we'll see. Hopefully he's going to be okay. He's from the small town of Hertzboro, Alabama. You talk about small southern towns, that's one of them. That's about yeah. 30 miles south of Auburn, Alabama. The total area of Hertzboro is one square mile. He is from a tiny, tiny town. I know the folks there are watching today. Hopefully 
Johnson will recover. So now we'll get a look at Isaiah Phillips, the sophomore from Houston. He'll come in the game at tailback. It was a good run and a first down throw now for Suits. Mm -mm, down he goes. That App State defense, which put so much pressure on Arkansas State last week. Say hello to Trey Cobb. He gets the sack, the junior from Waycross, Georgia. They were terrific 10 days ago, and that's exactly where they picked off today. And the second leading returning tackler from a season ago, and we chatted with uh, defensive coordinator Dale Jones this week. He said this guy is just, just a great player, really overall a great football player, and uh, plays that inside linebacker position so well for this App State defense. Leads him in sacks. That was his third. He leads him in tackles. Second down and long, and they dump it off short to Phillips. Oh, and he gets crushed back on the 48-yard line. The Mountaineers have come to hit today. That was Caden Smith, the strong safety. Oh, what a hit that was. Boy, Caden Smith looks like he was shot out of a rocket here. Watch 13. Goes low. He wraps. He gets him on the ground. That is a textbook tackle by the safety. So third and 16 now for ULM and Colby Suits. App's going to rush three and drop eight. A deep ball and nobody home. So after giving up the big run to Josh Johnson, App's defense closes the door. Yeah, it's unfortunate because that drive was promising as it started. Now you lose your top back. We hopefully will see him back in the game. Not sure about that. But again, you know, Suits is doing all he can trying to take a shot down the field. Third and 16 for an offense that's really struggled. It's a tough spot to be in. And App State's defense is going to get off the field. Here's Sparks in to punt again. Malik Williams is the return man inside his 10. He's looking up right into the sun, Dustin. Going to let it go, and it kicks into the end zone. It is a tough Sunday looking up into that sky today. There's not a cloud up there. It's just all bright sunlight here. It's just going to make for a beautiful full moon later on tonight, by the way. Oh, you know it will. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at what has happened to App State uh, so far this year. Three and one, but if you look closely at the left column, there was almost a month in between the Campbell and the Arc State games. And I said to Coach, what happened against Marshall? And he said, we just didn't play well. It's not that they you know, didn't show up or whatnot. Marshall's a really good football team. You know, they didn't run for uh, for over 100 yards, which, which certainly hurt their offense. And defensively, they just... Just didn't do enough, didn't make enough big plays. First down run, and a gain of a yard. When we take a look at Kevin Pointer, the defensive tackle, and the defensive line for ULM, they're athletic up front. They are, and, and you know Pointer's a good one. But the one that jumps out at me is you know, Ty Shelby, uh, their defensive end, number 44. I mean, he, he is a really good player, the most consistent player probably on defense. And, and they need those guys to step up and make big plays because yeah, their offense has really been struggling. On the run. Look at Thomas. Tremendous run down the sideline. Wiggins finally tracked him down. That little triple option attack out of the pistol. Watch, they fake the handoff to Harrington up the middle. Everyone and went for the fake, Everyone they? goes for the fake, and then on the outside, Jabari Johnson, number two, is stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's got to make a decision, and you know Zach Thomas just takes off and runs for the first down. Second big run of the day for Zach. Here goes Harrington, and he gets belted after a pickup of about three yards on the play. Austin Hawley came in to make the play. They're wearing those special uniforms here today. They're uh, the P-40 Warhawk jerseys. Hey, we got to talk about the P-40 Warhawk later because this, this thing is pretty sweet. I love the jerseys. They are very, very sharp. It is Military Appreciation Day here, by the way, at ULM. With those sharp teeth on the those, shoulder pads. Those are sweet. Thomas looks like he's changing the play at the line. Peterson, or rather Malik Williams now lines up. They go trips to the right on second and seven out of the gun. And keep it on the ground again to Harrington. And Monroe's defense is there. 
I think that uh, Zach Thomas saw that the defense of ULM was in man coverage. They, they shift a, a back out to the right, and they come back to the left side. They try to shift the strength of the defense, and it just didn't work. Shelby made the play defensively. Now they'll make a change. You saw Javarian Jenkins leave. They'll go nickel defensively on third down on a pure passing situation now for Thomas and App State. Going to keep it on the ground again, crossing everybody up. And Zach gets the first down, running the option on third and long. He has been a tremendous player over the years, and already on this drive we've seen why. He seems to make the right decision every time. Multiple uh, ball, uh, multiple rushes, I should say, on this drive by Zach Thomas. And you're right, that's just a great decision by him. He sees the defensive end, uh, bites on the running back. He tucks it, gets the first down. From the 44-yard line, straight ahead running again. And that's Peoples, his first touch of the day. Sophomore out of Alabama. He had that knee injury uh, in last year's season opener. They've got great depth at running back. In fact, all four App State running backs have had at least one 100-yard game this year. From the 35, on the ground again. This is the nation's seventh leading rushing team. This is their bread and butter. Peoples gets inside the 30-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. And yeah, the running backs have been tremendous. You look at what they've done on the, on the starting job from there. Thomas to the air. A short pass to Malik Williams. And a run ahead for nine ahead of the 21-yard line before Austin Hawley brought him down. So Marcus Williams, number eight, fifth-year senior, was supposed to be the starter coming right. into the season. His three fumbles on the year, and basically his last fumble two games ago, hasn't seen the field since. If you fumble the ball and play for Sean Clark, you're not going to play very no. much. No, <laughs> it's, it's discipline, it's fundamentals, and that is what App State uh, really embodies. Ball security number one. They talk about that every practice, every meeting. Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator, said the number one thing we talk about with our kids, particularly when you're going on the road, ball security. They turn the ball over on their first possession. They're looking to score here. That'll be enough for the first down. Hawley again uh, made the play defensively. That was Tucker on the carry. Tucker, just a freshman. Hasn't seen much action this season. Has a couple carries. It is a first down, and now Thomas has some room. He's inside the 10, puts his shoulders down, and gets inside the one-yard line. It will be first down and goal to go for App State. They don't like their quarterbacks to slide, and, and of course, Zach Thomas takes off here with this. Puts his shoulders down, tries to avoid the brunt of the contact, but that's going to give him a first and goal. Zach Thomas, we talked about him in the open. This kid is very, very impressive. From inside the one, first and goal, and an easy walk-in touchdown for Peebles. It's his third score of the year, and App State jumps on top here in the first quarter. Well, that's just too easy up front for this App State offensive line they get great push and cam peoples who goes 6 2 210 gets him in the end zone well when you run behind an offensive line like that it combined for what 134 consecutive starts there's some people is brought to you by peloton millions of reasons one community Just a beautiful day here in northeast Louisiana. 64 degrees at kickoff. Not a cloud in the sky. It's going to be a beautiful night for the trick-or-treaters here. Feeling a little spooky? I hear it. With that blue full moon tonight? Oh, boy. I know. Well, App State leads 7-0. Staten will be kicking the football off to Isaiah Phillips. And 
Phillips touched it, and then, oh my goodness, oh, it goodness. went out of bounds. That is just a mistake by Phillips. Should have let it go. If you're going to try to field that, you got to either fair catch it or you got to get on the end line, or the sideline, I should say, and touch the ball. That's That would be a penalty uh, on the kicking team. But, man, that's just a mistake right there by Isaiah Phillips. And his coaches are going to fill him in on that. You've got to shake it off as a player yeah. because, you know, with the injury, Dusty, to, to Josh Johnson, Phillips has to stay in the game now. He's not just a special teams guy. He's going to have to be the tailback. Yeah, and he was just kind of the change of pace back to, to Johnson. So now he's going to be the – asked to be the bell cow. And by the way, he's only 5'7", a buck 90, so he's not the biggest guy in the world. They give it to him on first down and nothing doing. He got maybe a half yard on the play, and there was Trey Cobb and Ryan Huff in there to say hello. You can see some of the things that have happened here in the first 10 minutes of this football game, why ULM is winless, correct? Mistakes, you know, just little things, and of course, bad luck too. I mean, you're starting running back to have an injury on the opening drive of the game. I mean, that, that's just unfortunate for them. And again, you're playing good football teams here. Here's Jeremy Hunt in the game at quarterback now. And Hunt delivers to the side, and it's ahead of about the 13-yard line. Gene Charles came in there to make the tackle on the freshman receiver, Whitfield. It's close to a first down. Now, we knew we'd see a couple different quarterbacks coming to this game. You know, Hunt and Colby Suits were kind of competing for the job, but with all the COVID situation, you know, Suits had the more experience uh, coming into the game, coming into the season, I should say. Third and two for Jeremy Hunt in his first action of the day. Looking left, throws that way, and it's incomplete. He was trying to connect again with Whitfield, the freshman, right in front of his own bench, and the Warhawks will kick it away, this time out of the end zone. Well, this defense for App State is, is very impressive. The speed is, is what jumps out at me, Bill. When you watch the way that they run to the football mm -hmm. and just their, their covered skills, I mean, they're locking these guys down on the outside. They're getting pressure. They're not like the biggest defense you would see, but, boy, they recruit athletes that can run, and it's just apparent so far the defense is flying around. Sparks gets it away. Fair catch called for by Malik Williams on the 46, and that's where App will take over late in the first quarter. Mountaineers up 7 up it. Don't forget to vote on Election Day, November 3rd. For more. That is the actual sound of a Curtis P-40 Warhawk that made its first flight way back in 1938. You know, back in 2006, Northeast Louisiana changed to Louisiana Monroe, and they changed the name from Indians to Warhawks in honor of the P-40 Warhawk plane and Matt Viator's in his fifth year as the head coach here. He's a Louisiana guy if ever one there was at McNeese State before that in high schools in the state. He is a Louisiana guy through and through. App State with the lead and the football. And that's Marcus Williams, the senior from Rocky Mount carrying the football. He runs into Travion Webster, he was banged up this week. There were some thoughts that Webster may not be able to go today, uh, which is a key guy for them, but Williams is a tough guy to bring down at 210. He is, and we talked about you know, his fumbling issues he's had this season. Well, it's good to see him back out here on the field. It really gives them kind of a, a four-headed monster in the backfield. He has the first down, and he breaks free. Williams inside the 20. Still going, and he'll score. Tremendous run for Marcus Williams, Jr. That's number eight, Marcus Williams, Jr. Boy, sometimes maybe not playing as much motivates you. Watch the cutback and the determination on this run by Marcus Williams at the end. He cuts back inside to get a block, and then right there, you're going to see a missed tackle by Kevrick Wiggins, number five, the cornerback for ULM just can't get him on the ground. You've got to wrap and tackle a big fellow like Marcus Williams, and that didn't happen right there. Staten adds the extra point, and App doubles the lead, 14-0. I mentioned he's a tough guy to bring down to 210. You know, Wiggins is only 170, 
Once he got to the second level, Wiggins had no chance to bring down a guy that outweighs him by 40 pounds. Right, we didn't get touched until he's about seven yards downfield. And you watch Wiggins come in. He was number five right there. He's 5'11", 170, number five, Wiggins. And then look at uh, Williams, Marcus Williams, I should say, right there. Hold on to the football at the end of the play. We talked about the fumbling. There was a defender coming in right at the end trying to punch the ball out. And, of course, not going to happen today. Well, if Coach Clark's team made a statement against Arkansas State, they have come on the road, and even though they had a turnover on their first possession, the first-year coach has got to be happy. He's got a two-score lead in the opening period. Well, think about it. I mean, that first interception was probably a touchdown. It's kind of a freak play that bounces somehow out of the receiver's hands. The DB picks it off, takes it the other direction, but that's three straight drives where they've marched right down the field on the Warhawks. Isaiah Phillips returns from the 10 for ULM. And near the 24-yard line, he steps out of bounds. Well, now we'll see who the Warhawks bring in at quarterback and what they'll do. Looks like he's going to go back to Colby Suits here. If you're just joining us, Josh Johnson, their terrific tailback, injured earlier in this quarter, and that is a big loss for a team that's had a hard time running the football anyway. There's no question. Now they're basically left with Isaiah Phillips, who's a sophomore, 5'7", 192 pounds, but he just has six carries on the season, so not a lot of experience from that position now as Josh Johnson, your bell cow, is uh, out with what, what would appear to be a uh, hamstring injury. First down throw for Suits. Connects to Carter. And that's a good first down throw. One thing that Coach V talked about this week, he said, every time I look up on the scoreboard in the first quarter, we're down. And not down 7 nothing. It's 14 nothing, 21 nothing. This is familiar territory for his kids. And, and like last week against South Alabama, you know, they go down to the five-yard line and they throw a 95-yard pick six. I mean, they, they just have had so much bad luck in the red zone. Can't get a lead, turn the football over. Mistakes, being bad in the kicking game, inconsistent on third and fourth down defensively, can't get off the field. They've got a lot of issues. Nice job by Phillips to stay on his feet. He picks up the first down ahead to the 37-yard line. But despite being winless and despite trailing every minute of every game this season, they've had really good spirits. They've had good practices. We had a chance to is it with a couple of the players? Yeah. They're very enthused. There's not been an attitude issue here at all. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's been such a weird year, 2020, the issues that everyone has to deal with. It, you know, everyone's been hit with some sort of COVID uh, situation, and, and players are resilient. And I think the kids are just happy to, to play football because, Billy, at least when you're playing ball, it takes your mind off of everything else. Suits gets out of trouble and stays on his feet. And ahead to the 45-yard line. An eight-yard pickup for Colby Suits. And the tough thing, too, you know, you're replacing a three-year starter at quarterback. That's tough. And then having no offseason, no spring ball, your training camp is all messed up. You're missing all this time. That's tough to develop a young quarterback at any level, certainly at, at an FBS level here. And so they're just really trying to figure out that position. And defensively, they've got a lot of injuries. They're banged up and they're extremely young. Quick throw from Suits, and a tremendous job by the corner, chopping him down. App's corners are so good. Whether it's Stephen Jones or Shamar Jean Charles or Sean Jolly. They get guys on the ground. And when we talked with Dale Jones, he talked about the fact that they didn't miss any tackles. What, one missed tackle against Arkansas State? Well, that was really impressive. A deep shot for Bloomfield. Incomplete. Back to your point, Billy. When you have 26 days off, and you come into a game and you don't miss one tackle, that is unheard of. And I was talking with uh, defensive coordinator Dale Jones, and I said, why do you do it? He said, there's a couple things you have to do. He's like, you've got 11 guys running the football. You don't miss tackles. Because you, you're, the goal is to make the running back 
stop his feet. And you see, take a look at the missed throw. He wants his receiver to go deep, but be the, boy, the defense here of App State, so impressive. That, that 26 days off, you don't miss a tackle. I think it just speaks volumes to the way they practice and they execute tackling on game day. Second down, short throw to the tight end. And that's Tyler Lamb, tight end, to the 45-yard line. Yeah, they need to get their tight ends more involved in this offense as well. Certainly having some issues getting the football outside of their wide receivers. They've got Josh Peterson. Everyone knows he's all world. But uh, Tyler Lamb's going to be a pretty good one too. And they to find a way just to get some of those underneath throws, Bill, to get the chains moving. Going to let the quarter clock expire here. Good quarter for App State coming on the road. They lost their only previous road game this year at Marshall. But today they have looked every bit like the four-time defending Sunbelt Conference champs. 14-0, App State after one. Quarter, App State leading 14-0 here at Monroe. We talked about the fact that ULM has been behind all year long. That's not hyperbole. Look at the minutes trailed versus, well, minutes that they've had the lead this year. They have not been ahead for one minute of a game midway through this season. Well, there's a good reason why you're 0-6 right now. I mean, you got, got to get off to faster starts. You can't beat yourself and make mistakes, and that's what they've been doing. Third down run for Isaiah Phillips. And he gets ahead of the 44-yard line before Caleb Sperlin, the left defensive end from Galax, Virginia. He and Trey Cobb make the tackle. It's going to be fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Why yeah, this not, makes, right? This, well, this makes sense. I mean, you're, you're across midfield. You're getting some first downs in this drive. Absolutely love this call. Nothing to lose. Frankly, with, with big Colby suits at 6'3", 240, I'd get under center and just quarterback sneak it. I don't know why teams don't do that more often. Short throw, and that'll be enough for the first down by about a yard as he connects to Isaiah Phillips. But you saw the closing speed again. That time it was Caden Smith that made the play defensively. But a good job by Phillips to hang on to the ball on a first down for the Warhawks. A little bit of a dangerous call to put the ball in the air on fourth and one. Nonetheless, they keep the chains moving, and we'll see if maybe uh, ULM can get something going here, something positive, get some points on the board, try to feel like you're, you're in this game because right now it's just been so dominant for App State, their offense has just marched up and down the field. From the 41, and nothing to do it inside that time for Phillips. Caden Smith coming up and winning the battle. Senior strong safety. Caden Smith's a, a really impressive safety. You know, they, they were saying that he can play really anywhere in the secondary. He's got excellent coverage skills, good speed. And you see the physicality. He's already made a couple nice plays uh, in the run game coming up from his safety spot. Suits looks right, throws that way, and it's incomplete. Again, that was Sean Jolly. We talk an awful lot about how quick the App State corners are. They're also very physical. You look at Jolly. And Shamar Jean Charles, they're the two top corners in the country, according to Pro Football Focus. They rate the cornerbacks. This is the top tandem in the entire nation. So you talk about trying to take chances uh, down the field, number three and number eight. You want to stay away from these guys. Jolly's got a chance to, to play at the next level, and I, I think I think Shamar does as well. Another third down throw. Delivered behind the receiver, but a good adjustment, and that'll be enough for the first down. That ball was really thrown behind Fret, but he made a nice adjustment to haul it in. Yeah, I just was giving Jolly some praise, and he plays a little bit too soft in his zone coverage, and the post goes right inside of him. I think he was expecting a little bit of help right there from Trey Cobb. Uh, but again, a little behind it, but still, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a completion. You're moving the chains. Get something positive going here for your offense.
on the ground on first down. As the field gets shorter, though, as we get near the red zone, App State's defense is going to get even better, isn't it? Yeah, this is where they really kind of buckle down. They pin their ears back. They're going to put pressure on Colby Suits. That's Boy. another tackle by Trey Cobb. He and Caden Smith in the corners have been really all over the place and here you, in this first quarter. You talk about the, the red zone for ULM. I mean, they're, they're 58%. That's 92nd in the country, you know, coming to this ball game. So they're, they're not efficient down here. They've, they've got to do a better job of capitalizing and certainly scoring touchdowns when they get down here. Suits lets it go. It's caught again, but... The so. closing speed of Sean Jolly <laughs> again. I mean, th th it's like an NFL type window. You have to force that football in because you know, a lot of times in college you'll have zone coverage and uh -huh. the corner will be five yards away or whatever, and the quarterback can just throw it out there. But watch the speed. Number three, the burst. He's got his eyes on the ball and he gets there. Really, really well thrown football there by Suits, but the coverage speed, there's nowhere to go after the catch. They'll go empty here, no backs. Five receivers for the first time today for Colby Suits and ULM. Suits going to try to run for it. And he gets knocked down near the 14-yard line. He needed to get to the 13. He may have had enough for progress. He did. First down run. A pretty good decision by Colby Suits here. What they do is they actually line up Josh Peterson, number 86, their big tight end, out wide, and they run a little, like, scissor route. Picks up that first down. You know, they list them at 235, 240, but Suits is really, what would we say, 250-ish? Boy, I, I don't think I want to tackle a quarterback who's 250 pounds. My goodness. He hands it off, and the ball is on the ground. And ULM covers it. Phillips coughed it up, but the Warhawks fall on it. Boy, that was, again, almost one of those plays we've been talking about, the inconsistencies, the mistakes down here in the red zone, and not sure who gets on the football there. It was Bloomfield. Was it Bloomfield? The speedster. Recognized the ball come out and just comes in here out of nowhere, dives on the ball, Johnny on the spot because that was going to be a turnover. And App State was going to have the football at about the one yard line. But again, you still see the inconsistencies. He looks like he's a little banged up right there. Bloomfield coming off the field. He leaves and Brandon Harrington, uh, Brendan Harrington, I beg your pardon, from App also shaken up on the play. So first and goal from the one. For I, suits. I would not run to the teeth of this defense right here. I, I would take a couple shots to the outside. And that's why. Because Phillips is just 5-7 running against that defensive line that is winning the battle at the point of attack on nearly every play. And this is what I hate. Can I can I rant for a minute here about college football? And just, just offenses in general. So it's first and goal at the one-yard line. I don't know why teams get in the shotgun here and run the football. Like, yep got to have some sort of an offense where you can get under center and just hand the football off, get in the eye formation, power eye, run power right at this defense if that's what you want to do. And there they do. Second down and goal, and if this will be the touchdown. Nicely done. That's Perry Carter. That's why you get under center, Bill. Good things happen at the one-yard line. Well done. And what it really does, Bill, is, is it when you get in that tight formation, and you get under center, it forces everybody to think you're, you're going to run right up the middle. And what they do is with the, the reverse action, they get them going on the outside. You see the speed of Bloomfield, or Carter, I should say, excuse me. Nearly missed the PAT, but that's a weapon. This gentleman from the uh, Warhawk band beat him to it. Yeah, I saw that at the store, and I didn't have my size. Well, Perry Carter on the end around gets Louisiana Monroe on the board. 14-7, and App will get the football now for the fourth time. And a good stop inside the 20-yard line. The Warhawks have played so hard. That was Zach Rasmussen 
on special teams. They've been given great effort. Well, what a Big Ten game we have for you on this Halloween night featuring electrifying dual threat QBs. Justin Fields leads the number three Buckeyes into State College to take on Sean Clifford in number 18 Penn State. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific at Beaver Stadium on ABC and the ESPN app. The Bucks have won seven of the last eight meetings against Penn State. They have all been very close, though, by the mm -hmm. way. And I'll be curious to watch that game tonight. Happy Valley, nighttime Halloween, but no fans, so no whiteout conditions for the Nittany Lions. From the 20, Zach to throw it on first down, and it is caught. Flag was thrown on the play as well. That was just a tremendous play. Marbles had perfect co coverage on that play. Could not have been better coverage. I, I think they got him for holding here on the outside. And Hennigan was able to catch it anyway. Pass interference. Defense, number three. That penalty is declined. First down. Hennigan, Hennigan is does, a tremendous yeah. receiver. Sorry, Billy. He, he does everything he can to kind of wall off the defender. Marbles there and a, a really great throw. Watch this. There's contact there. He's going to hold him up with two hands and somehow Zach Thomas fits that into that tight window. Well played by both Thomas and Hennigan. Two seniors that have played an awful lot with each other over the years. There's a pickup of about six yards. Thomas hands it off. This is Williams Jr. again. And he'll have the first down, crossing the 50-yard line to the 49-yard line. Travion Webster made the play, but again, App State churning up, getting some big yards on seemingly every snap. And when you're getting that, you know, almost five yards a carry from your tailbacks, and you can just rotate fresh guys in there every other play, I mean, it's just too easy. And then what they do, is they'll kind of lull you to sleep a little bit, and then all, all of a sudden Zach Thomas will get in the shotgun position, and he'll hit, throw it over your head, which is what I would do right now. You, you've been running it efficiently. i take a shot right here at midfield. Keep it on the ground again. They are just pushing them down and with fresh legs, whether it's Peoples or Harrington or now Williams on this drive. They are churning the yards on the ground. And churning that clock, too. It's been a fast-moving first half. I mean, if you think about it, Dusty, the last two games, look at the stats. They've rushed for 305 and 404 yards. I mean, <laughs> this is App State football right here. I mean, we are in northeast Louisiana, but in a way, those guys in the black helmets are saying, welcome to Boone, here we come. You see the numbers, 168 already in this game. They're three wins. Talk about it. I mean, they're averaging almost 340 yards per game. It's almost the same play every yeah. time. They're running the same play. <laughs> They Here we go. We're going to get five more on this carry. That time it was uh, Pointer that made the play defensively on Marcus Williams Jr. You He's know, going to get a breather now after four carries straight. You know, Bill, this App State offense, they run a zone blocking scheme. What that means is the lineman will then kind of not block their man. They'll block down. And then what it does is it allows the running back to pick and choose his hole. And that's why you're seeing these seams. And these running backs do such a great job of getting north and south. Third and short, Harrington is in the game now, a tailback with fresh legs. Hennigan comes in motion. Struggling for the first down and a win at the point of attack that time for ULM. If you think that uh, App State's not going to go for this, you're crazy. And, but again, really good job up front. You know, you, you got that middle of the defense kind of just walling it off and there's just nowhere for the running back to go fourth and one this is a, this is a, a no-brainer situation here for Sean Clark and his offense they got the stop on third and one can they get it on fourth down no Harrington that time spins for the first down ahead to the 37 yard line just grinding out these runs just churning the first downs one of the reasons that 
four different at tailbacks have run for 100 yards this year. They've had guys beat up. Harrington's the healthiest one they have consistently. Well, Andy broke out. I mean, he's had big games. That Campbell game, he had a 211-yard performance. And 137 last week. That's right. throws deep and it's caught for the touchdown Christian Wells hauls it in a flea flicker trick or treat Mountaineers Christian Wells just another one of those receivers that is starting to break out in this offense they've got a ton of weapons on the outside for Zach Thomas to throw to. I mean, this is just amazing the amount of weapons this offense has, not just at running back. We talk about the, the four-headed monster there, but outside, I mean, there's just, they can just rotate guys in and out. Wells off a monster performance last week. And, and I love your point, Bill. A little Take a look outside here on the edge. That's Christian Wells. As they fake the handoff, for the flea flicker. It's a double move right here on the outside, and he's just going to be wide open, and the DB has got to play the football. He still has a chance. The ball's a little bit underthrown, but a really great play by Christian Wells. A little stutter and go on the outside, and a beautiful job finishing the football play. Seventh touchdown, touchdown of the year for Zach Thomas, and his App State team now leads 21-7. Yeah, but I agree with you. I think when uh, Jabari Johnson looks at the tape, Tomorrow he's going to say, I need to go catch that football. Got to play the ball. Isaiah Phillips on the kick return for the Warhawks. Has a bit of a seam, but it closes in a big old hurry, and the ball is out. I think App State might have it. Boy, there was a big collision. Oh, no. ULM got it back. Wow, what a break for the Warhawks. And they needed to hold on to the football. Hey, kick off your week. 8 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Randy Moss has an exclusive interview with Tom Brady, plus Tua makes his first NFL start Sunday against the Rams. And we'll hear from some of the game's greatest left-handed quarterbacks. They'll also have the early breaking stories, injury updates, and more tomorrow at 10 a.m. Speaking of Tua, how about his younger brother last night? After a miserable performance in Week 1 against mm -hmm. Northwestern, to bounce back like that in prime time, so, so impressive. They were down 17 points, 18 points in, in the fourth quarter. And the Maryland yeah. uh, quarterback led the Terps to an impressive win. Suits on first down throws, and that's right through the hands of Bloomfield again. Boy, they have just missed on some plays, haven't they? It's a close one. Shamar Gene Charles was the other corner in coverage there. I'm not sure if he might get a paw on this. Yeah, there's pretty good coverage. No, I think Gene Charles gets in there with his hand and gets that ball out. Good job picking up on that. Gene Charles breaks up more passes than any other player in the Sun Belt and among the leaders nationally. In fact, App State's defense is number one in passes defended per game. 7.5 per game for App State. Suits on second down. Raj comes and he is sacked for the second time this afternoon. Well, that was some great disguise by App State defensively. They, they line up like they're going to play cover three, and then they shift out the last minute to, to cover two look, and Suits just didn't have anywhere to go with the football. Watch him sit back there, looks off to his left, doesn't ex uh, expect that linebacker to be there, and the window closes rather quickly. And if you're Dale Jones and you've got these veterans back there, you yeah. can make changes on the fly, right? No question. you got guys you feel comfortable with, confident in, these guys can do all kinds of disguises. And certainly when you've got players that you can match up with on the outside. Timeout. Appalachia State. It allows you to also do more. also be a media timeout. Allows you to do more in terms of pressures, and that's huge. Northeast Louisiana. Monroe, Louisiana to be exact. Bill Roth along with Dustin Fox. Hey, we're excited about this game tonight. Penn State and Ohio State, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. The Buckeyes looked so good against Nebraska. The Lions had that tough loss in its uh, game up at the Indiana. Huge, huge game of the Big Ten. 
Third down now for Suits and ULM. Let's it go over the middle, and he connects. That might have been his best throw of the game, and it is a first down. Boy, Demetrius Taylor on the inside looks like he's going to have a for sure sack of Colby Suits. Watch nine right here coming inside, and he does a really good job, the offensive line of ULM, of picking him up and Suits stepping up there and delivering that football. It's plays like that and clips like that that when opposing coaches, like Dale Jones, the defensive coordinator for App, you say you look at them on film and it doesn't look like an 0 and 16. Because during the course of the game, Suits will make three or four plays like that in a row. Here's a first down run and a pickup of four for Isaiah Phillips. The problem is the fifth throw can be brought back from pick six the other way, right? And it's happened to him too many times this year, and, and that's kind of the season in a nutshell. It's been, you know, almost like when they got down there for the first touchdown, Bill, they fumble, right, the one-yard line. Well, typically that goes the other way. So maybe maybe it's, you know, this Halloween, you know, full moon thing has something going here for, for ULM. Things are going for their direction today. Well, if they could get a score here before halftime and go oh, in yeah. just one score against App, that would be tremendous, particularly considering that Josh Johnson is hurt. Here's Whitfield, and he'll be knocked down inbounds, shy of the first down by Sean Jolly again. Inconsistent quarterback play and the inability to run the ball. That has basically been the season in a nutshell for ULM. Only four teams in college football have 12 games scheduled. We are halfway through the season. They're 0-6, and, and they've yet to hit 100 yards rushing in a game as a team. We stop the clock. And with Johnson being out, they may continue again today. Have you heard that before, Bill? The chains are broken? Yeah. yeah. It's 2020. It's 2020, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the answer to everything these days? Third down and one. And again, the, the five foot seven inch sophomore from Houston, Phillips is the back. They don't give it to the end around on the sweep. Phillips takes it and he will have the first down. Crossing midfield to the app 48 yard line, Caden Smith making the play defensively. Well, it's an opportunity for Phillips, right? Johnson is down and it's an opportunity for Phillips to show what he can do as the primary carrier. And he's only got eight carries on the season, so uh, he's going to have to play a lot this game, and I'm, I'm guessing if those hamstrings don't heal overnight, probably a lot more as we go throughout the rest of the season. From the 48, the snap's a bit low. This is a trick play, the lateral, and then the deep pass. It is caught, and then it's dropped incomplete. It was stripped at the last moment. I think Gene Charles may have stripped that free as well, but that's another example of just missing for ULM. You know what I love about this play by Gene Charles here on the outside? He's, he's beat, okay? It's a trick play. He bites on, on the fake. He comes up, but he doesn't give up on the play. He's in a defeated position, and a lot of times in these situations, down the field, you'll see a cornerback kind of panic, and they'll grab, and there'll be a penalty call. It'll be a pass interference or a hold. And in that situation, he didn't. He played the ball through the receiver's hands, through the, through the down, all the way to the ground, I should say, and it made the play. That's that's well played cornerback play for App State. That ball gets tipped and nearly intercepted right through the hands of Phillips. Watch Jim Charles recover on this. All right, so he's behind the entire down. He, look at this. Gets his hand through it and plays the ball all the way to the ground. That's exactly how you're taught. See, this ball's caught. And right there, he rips it out the last second. Beautiful play. That's his 11th pass breakup of the season. Second today, he's now number one in America in pass breakups. And so big third and 10 coming up here. You know Colby's gonna have to put it in the air. I'll be curious to see if you got any pressure coming here from App State. And they all drop out. He just rushed three. And they get to Suits anyway. That'll be the third sack of this first half. And App's going to call timeout with a minute 42 to go. Jordan Earl, Taylor, get the sack. 
Well, they called the timeout with about a buck 47, and the clock still ran. Timeout. Appalachian State. Second charge timeout. Please 136 to go. We are back in Monroe in a moment. 44, please. And in the first half here in Monroe, Louisiana on Military Appreciation Day, Bill Roth, Dustin Fox with you. So glad you could join us on this Halloween Saturday. It is also Military Appreciation Saturday here at ULM. All right, what's the strategy now, buddy? A minute 44 to go. App just called timeout. They want the ball back. They do, but you've got a fourth and long coming up here. Now, Colby Suits could do the little quick kick on this thing, but I'm surprised that, if, that they are going for it. Nope, they're going to line up and they're going to go ahead and kick it. Good punt. Beautifully done, and it's unfortunately <laughs> batted into the end zone. Is that Peterson at punt? Couldn't tell. I think it was. We well, know he can do it all. He lined up as the tight end on the fourth down play, and then Peterson did punt it. But. He laid it up beautifully inside the. Well, in 2020, I like the decision. My thought. Was him at halftime, and you know his story and his father, Doug Peterson, former NFL quarterback. Super Bowl champion head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And a proud alum of this university. That's right. One timeout left, though, for Zach Thomas in App State. He'll run on first down, and he gets out of bounds near the 30. Give him a nine-yard pickup. They'll call up a 29-yard line. Hunter Smith was in pursuit of Zach. Just the veteran presence of Thomas, knowing there, hey, we got one timeout left. We're trying to go down here and get some points. Got to make sure I get out of bounds. He probably could have cut it upfield to get the first down, but he decides it's smarter. Hey, let's get out of bounds here, save ourselves some clock. Is it important to save the timeout if you want to get a field goal kicker in late? That is the idea, and they've got a pretty decent kicker, so they've, they've just got to get within probably distance of about 45 yards. Harrington has the first down, and he gets knocked out of bounds again. Boy, it helps when you've got a veteran senior like Thomas back there. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's almost like having another coach on the field. And, and I, I'm guessing that it's probably fun for him to run the two-minute drill because he gets a chance to actually just run the offense and throw the football. As a quarterback, you want to do that. You live for these opportunities as opposed to, you know, handing the football off half the time. From the 34, Thomas to let it go again. Steps into that throw, and it's through the hands of the receiver, Wells, but a flag thrown. I think they're going to get Wiggins. Is it Wiggins? Number five? I think so. He knew he saw it. He had man coverage. Thomas did. And it's a little just stutter off the line of scrimmage. He created enough separation. I thought that was going to be a, a, a surefire catch. But, of course, he, he had some cloth. And then we see a little cloth on the field. Pass interference. Defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. Watch this, a little stutter, great separation right here, and then the jersey hold right there. That's what they're going to get him on, and he knows he's going to get this call. Nearly makes the catch, watch this. Well, a little bit, a little bit of OPI there, too. They could have gone both ways. Uh, typically, the refs uh, kind of let those little ticky-tack ones go for the offense. I know it's a former DV, by the way. Of course, that's the side <laughs> you pick. <laughs> Gives him a first down, just shy of midfield. Thomas, another deep throw. And they rule that incomplete. Now here does come the flag as Holly collided with the intended receiver. Flag for pass interference again. The Sunbelt crew is visiting. Uh, it was caught by the defense. That was an interception for sure. But will it stand?
Well, they're clearly not 100% sure just yet. And now they'll fill in the referee, and then we will hear from him. Pass interference. Defense. Number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's back-to-back calls on Wiggins. Comes back to the exact same side of the field. Oh, my goodness, absolutely. Tackles him. And that time they were trying to get the target on the outside. Christian Horn, the true freshman. So back-to-back -back pass interference penalties on Wiggins. The freshman from Texas moves the ball all the way to the 36-yard line of Louisiana Monroe. And now before the snap, whistle stop play. And a timeout. Timeout. ULM. First charge timeout. Be a 30-second timeout. There's a good look at Thomas. You know, he gives a lot of credit, Dustin, for his success to his high school coach at Hewitt Trustville High School over in Alabama, right? He gives it to a gentleman named Josh Floyd. Back in 2014, Zach, he was actually considering transferring from his high school. When, when Floyd was hired, he changed the offense. Thomas excelled. He blossomed into a prolific quarterback there. And if the name Josh Floyd sounds familiar to you, it probably should. He was that record-shattering QB for... Gus Malzahn at Shiloh Christian High School in Arkansas. Remember when all those records were set in the yeah, 90s? Yeah, that's right. And Floyd has had a sensational career as a coach. In fact, Hewitt Trustville's in the playoffs again. They've got a big playoff game on the road next Friday. And I know they're watching, and they're proud of their Husky alum, Zach Thomas. He hung in there with his high school, and so he's part of that Malzahn family tree. Some good uh, recon right there, Billy. Digging deep. From the 36, let's see if Thomas has another touchdown pass in him. Everyone's covered, but he's got some green room, and he slides in after picking up the first down near the 25-yard line right in front of Austin Hawley. They'll stop the clock to move the chains, and app going quick here. Remember, they do have the one timeout remaining. I'm guessing they're thinking seven here, not just three. Here's Davis in a crowd. He gets ahead of the 20-yard line for a pickup of six as we turn under a minute to go here in the half. You want to save the timeout. Got to get up to the line, go fast. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Oh, that's Thomas has all sorts of room again. Stays on his feet, and he has the first down inside the three-yard line down to the two. It'll be first and goal for Zach Thomas in App State. Well, that thing just cleared out. The wide receiver at the bottom of the screen goes all the way across in man coverage, and great awareness by Thomas to see that and have the presence to step up. Harrington takes the handoff on first and goal, and he runs into Ty Shelby. Now you got to bend their most consistent defender and they'll call a timeout now with 17 seconds left so timeout. Appalachian State third and final timeout 30 second timeout all right so here's the deal you got strategy here no timeouts you still can run the football but you got to be careful because if you run the ball and get stopped you got to spike it which you have enough downs to do and then you get it, run your field goal a team on the field or you take a couple shots at the end zone. You've got a fifth-year senior that is going to make the right decision, I would think. Tony Peterson will call the play. He's the offensive coordinator for Appalachian State. Speaking of Tony Peterson, you know, his last game as a collegiate player was in the 1987 1AA National Championship game. He quarterbacked Marshall against Northeast Louisiana. Oh, boy. Which, of course, then became ULM. Old, old Stomping grounds, yeah, right. of course. So Tony Peterson back here in action, competing now as a coach, offensive coordinator for App State against this team. Look at coach There's Peterson. Tony, prolific quarterback for the Thundering Herd. I joked with him, I said, you're one of the greatest ever. He said, you know who came in after I played there? Who's that? <laughs> Marshall great quarterbacks they had there after oh, yeah. Tony left. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to do here on 
Second down and goal, 17 seconds, no timeouts. Do they decide to run here? Thomas gets brought down with 13 seconds left. He's got to hurry. They got to hurry. They got to spike it. Well, you all ran off with the football, which, is, which should be a delay of game. And they don't get the spike in time. And the App State coaches are upset. Well, because the ULM defender took the ball and ran about seven, eight yards the other direction. That should have been a delay of game on the defense. <laughs> they absolutely should get another chance to snap this football. Sean says we need to have some seconds put back on the clock. Meanwhile, the Monroe kids are saying it's halftime. Let's uh, let's go to the locker room, and the officiating crew will have a chance to meet and go through this again. But I think you're right. There's going to be some time put back on the clock or a penalty against ULM. Well, it should be a penalty for, for a delay. Watch, watch what happens. So Thomas probably makes a poor decision. He should probably just throw this football away. But watch after the play's over. You'll see the defender pick up the ball and starts going the other direction. Well, he's going to claim that he thought it was a fumble. And you can't read his mind, right? Well, I guess that's a fair point. So I, you know, I'm a defender. The ball's on the ground. I got, I'm got. i going to pick it up and run with it. So after looking at that. The ruling on the field is that the half is over. Yeah, because clearly you don't know what he was thinking. He sees a ball on the field. There's no whistle yet. He picks it up and runs with it. But they will review it. Half time. Wow. Well, I did a good good play by the ULM defender by saving the points. And you can certainly understand why Karch Clark would be upset. He's saying their defender picked up the ball and didn't let you all spot it. But interesting play call, yeah. an interesting decision by Thomas not to throw it away. That's the risk yeah. of running the ball. Well, that is the end of the first half from Monroe, Louisiana on this Halloween Saturday. We'll get you to our ESPN studio next, right after these quick messages. <laughs> we take it very seriously in our house. And uh, unfortunately not able to be there for trick-or-treat, but we're here on Halloween evening as we uh, will see the moon pop up at some point here. I love some of the outfits. Oh, you see the, the uh, Scooby-Doo? Yeah. I like that one. App State's going to get the ball to begin the second half, leading just by two scores, 21-7. And that's going to be a kickoff out of bounds, and that'll be a penalty. And we'll get things going following that for App State. All right, give me a grade of Appalachian's offense in the first Kick half. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball we placed at the 35-yard line. How would you first grade down. Zach and uh, what we saw to the guys in the black helmets in the first half? Give them a B plus. How about that? Because, okay. again, they didn't finish off the end of the first half. They get down to the one-yard line. It was bad clock management by Appalachian State. And, you know, Zach Thomas not throwing that football away. That was kind of surprising there and not be able to get a, get a field goal unit uh, on the field. Mm -hmm. But overall, I mean, they ran the ball effectively. They did the things they're supposed to do. But if you're an Appalachian State fan, you expect to be up at this point 28-7 at halftime after the last drive. So that's why I dropped them down from maybe an A-minus to a B-plus. You are a tough grader. They average 9.2 yards per play. Got to get in the end zone. But it's about points. Production. Got to get in the end zone. Let's see how they do. First possession of quarter number three for Thomas. The last time I played here was a wild shootout in Monroe and winning up at the end. Here's Harrington and he shows his strength with his legs. Webster the senior weak linebacker made the play defensively but it was another seven yard pickup on first down for Datrick Harrington. You can see why he's getting the bulk of the carries in this offense. He just keeps churning those legs. So it takes multiple defenders to get him on the ground. Picks up seven yards. What looked like it was just going to be about a three or four yard game. Yeah. 
Running behind the tight end, Pearson. Here he goes again, and he's got the first down. This is vintage App State football, isn't it? It absolutely is, and what you love about that run is it's second and three. If Harrington continues to stretch that thing out, which a lot of running backs do, and not get north and south, watch this. It's going to get stretched out, but right here is going to cut inside right there. That's where you pick up the first down, and that's just tremendous. Here he goes again across the 50. And it'll be second down and six for Harrington, who's out of the town of Douglasville, Georgia. And he has been one of the hottest backs in the Sun Belt Conference, in fact, nationally, over the last couple of games. Got the hot hand, and when you do, you're going to get the touches in this offense. What a rush. Good job, crew. From the 50, first throw of the second half, and Thomas dumps it off nicely to Malik Williams, and he's pushed out of bounds near the 46-yard line. That was Sweeney that brought him down defensively, Kilo Sweeney. Third down coming up for App. They are so good at converting on third downs. Best in this league in that category, and they're facing a team that's really struggled. Scott Stoker, the defensive coordinator for Monroe, was talking about the fact that Boy, we just can't get off the field. Here's a great example, right? It's yeah. third down and about three. And I think you've got really two plays. I can't imagine that App's not going to go for this if it gets the fourth down. Pass is broken up, but a flag. Oh, I thought that was really good coverage there by Josh Newton, but they're going to say he comes through the backside for a pass interference call. And he's upset about it. Newton had the interception on the first possession of this game. But this will be the third pass interference call against the Warhawks. Holding, number 20 on defense. Holding eligible receiver. 10-yard foul, first down. Dustin, he must have grabbed the jersey. He, he must have grabbed early because when, I, when he comes in, I, I thought that he it was kind of a bang-bang play. Watch right here. Yeah, there's the grab. He was at the point of contact when the football arrives. That was fine. But he grabs him early, and that's the right call. By the way, that's the third first down by penalty that App has gotten. All three, Christian Wells, the intended receiver. So he doesn't get credit for the yards there. <laughs> know what I'm are, saying? Uh, but he's drawing penalties. Some hidden yardage there. Mm -hmm. You know, Wells is a redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale who had the big game last week. He and Thomas clearly on the same page. He's got him. Nicely thrown. Touchdown, Malik Williams. <laughs> That Dusty was almost too easy for App. Boy, he had at least three yards of separation. And I'm thinking, Zach Thomas going to drop this in the bucket? And he does. Perfect throw. Way to come back and redeem himself. Look at this. The, the only defender is Keverick Wiggins. And, and again, he's running from behind three, four yards. That was a pretty quick response for the Mountaineers. Second touchdown pass of the day for Zach is eighth of the year. Staten knocks through the PAT, and App picks out for tonight. Aww. These young Warhawk fans came with their Halloween spirit. Would it be mean if they came to my house and I was in my Michael Myers outfit and scared them? You would not do that to that young lady, Aww, would you? Maybe. Oh, my God. You do it to my own kids. You did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you Buckeyes. My kids are horrified. App State again comes down the field and they <laughs> get Bird and he chops down the return man, uh, Isaiah Phillips, who will have to stay in the game. Now they have told us that there is a chance Josh Johnson may be able to return. He wants to come back. He, he wants does, to yeah. play. But as of now, he's not in the uh, lineup for the uh, Warhawks. Look at this defense. So we talked to Defensive coordinator Dale Jones is keys to tackling. You got to pull the trigger, which means you got to go right now. You got to make the runner stop his feet. That's not a missed tackle if he stops his feet. And if all 11 pursue the ball, you'll make the tackle. And he's, the last point, which I love, is you got to go live in practice. Bill, we talk about, you know, the fundamentals of tackling and why there's been so many, you know, missed tackles, not in just college, but the pros. Teams aren't tackling live in practice. That was a great play there, by the way, by Harrington. Another pass breakup. 
Well, Dale Jones mentioned that, that a lot of teams don't do it. That yeah. it's that it app. We, well, we we practice football all the time. We're going to hit. We're going to bring people to the ground. Remember, they had 26 days off. They come back from from 26 days off, and they don't miss one tackle in the Arkansas State game last Thursday night. It speaks volumes to how they practice. And they had a 40 play live scrimmage too, by the way. Suit steps into a deep throw. Well underthrown and picked off on the 32 yard line by the Mountaineers' Ryan Huff. The junior out of Athens. That is the ultimate free safety play. He was backpedaling like a center fielder. And he's that half field safety. A lot of times he comes up inside the box. But on this play, he's going to play the half field, which means you're in cover two. And as the quarterback steps up here, he's just, this is like a Hail Mary. You're just taking a shot to try and make something happen. Ball's completely underthrown. Huff with an easy interception, the second pick of his career. And for Suits, the tough day continues. And here comes Thomas now, and App State looking to add to the lead. He's going to take a deep shot on first down, and he overshoots the Sean Davis at about the 20-yard line. You know, I'm laughing because Zach Thomas had really two receivers that were crossing. One was a little bit deeper, more like these kind of like levels, right? They're coming across the field as he's rolling out. He's got one about 15 yards behind the other. The other was the tight end coming across about 15 yards shallow, and he had to make the decision. Mm -hmm. He went for the deep ball. He did. That was actually the freshman uh, from South Carolina, Christian Horn, Running the deep route. Got a little greedy. Second and ten. And they gang up on Cameron Peebles. Boy, he's tough to bring down. Oh. Five of them, and they never do get him down, do they? He never even goes to the ground after five Warhawks are trying to bring him down. He keeps churning those legs. And again, just watch this. Here, one guy. Two guys, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight guys can't get him on the ground. Are you kidding me? I know it's not a gainer, but it's an impressive play. Let's see if ULM can force its first punt of the day. Nope. First down, sliding in at midfield is Zach Thomas. There's that awareness again from Thomas. Doesn't see anything that's for sure. He knows it's third down. Wants to keep the chains moving. Easily steps up for the first down. He's carried the football a bunch today. He has. He's actually apps leading rusher with that run. Dusty, he's up over 100 yards for the day. 102 yards rushing now for Zach Thomas. And they're starting to open up some really big holes now. Here's Peebles. And he gets ahead for about eight yards before Kevin Pointer. The defensive tackle makes the play, but it was seven, eight yards downfield. That offensive line is the most veteran OL in the Sun Belt. In fact, number two behind UVA nationally on App State has 134 starts on that offensive line. Virginia from the ACC has the most, 140. Those are the two most experienced offensive lines in college football. Keep an eye on number 60. That's their, that's their center, Noah Hannon. He's the bell cow front. Churning up yards again. Here comes Peebles down the sideline, and he's out of bounds, picking up another first down. When you are on defense, Dustin, and the other team is doing this to you, pound and pound and pound and there's a physical toll, but also a mental toll, isn't yes, there? There is. It, it wears on you. You look at the scoreboard, you're saying, goodness, it's 28 7. And they're still coming. They're There's no coming. huddle. There's they're no huddle. Coming. They're going to run the same play again. Here we go with Peebles inside the 20. He gets 10 more. And uh, a near first down run to the 20. He got nine on the play, they say. It'll be second and one. And an injured player for the Warhawks. And that is Hunter Smith, who was uh, banged up. Their, their whole linebacking core, uh, Webster and Johnson and Smith, they've all been banged up. That's the one position yeah. they can't afford another guy to get hurt. Well, we'll step aside. 9.49 to go in the third. Back in a moment.
forget tonight, Justin Fields leads number three Ohio State into State College to take on number 18 Penn State, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific from Beaver Stadium in State College. Catch it on ABC and the ESPN app. Always great when Ohio State plays Penn State, especially for my guy Dustin, whose brother Derek, of course, was a terrific player for the Nittany Lions. Your favorite team, obviously, is the Bucs, <laughs> but you also grew up kind of cheering for Penn State, too. This game means yeah. a lot to the Fox family. I, I grew up going to every game in Happy Valley from 96 to 99. In fact, I nearly committed to Penn State. A national championship and and certainly root for the the Nittany Lions every game except this one. What do you think that will be like tonight in that stadium? Oh man, 100,000 seats and it's going to be empty and no band too, by the way. So it's going to it's going to feel very very odd to those players. And I think for the Buckeyes, it gives them an advantage because not having the 100,000 strong Nittany Lion fans in all white for the whiteout, one of the best scenes in college football, by the way, it's going to be a little different. I know Herb Street and. Fowler are looking forward to doing that game with um, uh, Maria Taylor as well. And, and that's uh, it's going to be weird for those guys in the booth because I, I've seen Herbie post his videos of the, the whiteout, and it's just insane. And I've been there for a couple of them, too. They're, they're impressive. That was Tucker that had the carry on that play. Let's see what the penalty is. Personal foul. Face mask. Offense. Number zero. 15-yard penalty. Replay. Second down. So in this play, Tucker thought he was going with a stiff arm, but unusual call. The player with the ball actually called for the face mask right yeah. here. Right here is where you're going to see it. And was it that egregious? It was kind of close. A lot of times when an, uh, an offensive player, ball carrier, gets the hand on the face mask like a stiff arm, they typically don't call those unless you really egregiously grab it and rip the guy's helmet off. That's the first penalty on app today. And it comes uh, with 9.20 or so to go in the third period. Thomas to the air again, throws off his back foot and connects to Malik Williams to about the 30-yard line. And that's Hawley that made the play defensively again along with Webster. So that could be a big penalty here. I know that still can pick up the third and 11 here, but that was a situation where you're, you're getting near the red zone. Feeling like you're really, really um, kind of forcing your will running the football against the Warhawks. Third and 11 now for Thomas. The back is Peebles. They have not punted today. As App. They got man coverage right here at the top. That's complete to the 20, shy of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard, depending on where they spot this football. That was Hawley that made the tackle again. I think you just give the football to Cameron Peoples. If eight people can't tackle him for a loss, how, 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 how do you think he's not going to be able to get one yard here on fourth and one? I think number six, Cameron Peoples is having himself a nice afternoon. Apps one for one today on fourth down. Three of five on the year. My quarterback sneaking. Look how deep the back is. Peebles falls over his own guy and dives and gets to the 20. And that is going to be short. He was deep in the back. I was surprised. He? he looked like he was so deep. Typically in those situations when you just got to get a a yard? That back's going to be at like four or five yards. He was almost seven yards deep. That's, That's redshirt freshman yeah. Seth Mason that made the play defensively. Hey, they're winless on the season. They're 0-6. They're down three touchdowns at home. That's a that's a really big play to show to the guys in the film room. Absolutely. That's a win for that freshman defensive end, Mason. Boy, he pushes the tight end Mike Evans right down in front of Peoples. It's a, really, it's a friendly fire there to some degree. It's Evans falls in the backfield, and Peoples just does his best to get back to the line of scrimmage. This is Hunt back in the game at quarterback, and they keep it on the ground on the first down play to Phillips. And Marco Jackson, the junior inside linebacker, makes the play defensively. There's a good look at Jeremy Hunt. He's from 
Oak Park, Illinois. He's played more live snaps than suits in his career coming into the season. He's a bit more mobile. Signed with the ULM last December. Yeah, one of the publications thought that he was going to be the newcomer of the year coming into the season. On second down, he floats it incomplete. <laughs> it's so impressed to watch these corners, man. As a former corner myself, Shamar Jean Charles with beautiful technique down the field. Sean Jolly, the other corner, both terrific, terrific players. Shamar's from South Florida. Jolly's from uh, Georgia. The beauty of having veteran corners out there that are not only veterans but really good is that Dale Jones and, and, and his staff can do so many interesting things defensively. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting beat over the top on the outside. It, it just allows you to pressure more, to disguise more, to stunt more. Love that as a defensive coordinator. Hunt on third and ten, throws into a crowd. It's caught, and then the ball pops free, and it's App State coming out of there with it. Wow. It was deflected in Harrington. The linebacker the ruin ends on the up field. with the football. The ruin on the field is an interception. Boy, that football was nearly caught, and then it's kind of tugged out. And as it's going to the ground, I think it bounces off Trey Cobb. Take a look at this. See right here, you're going to see Cobb's going to come in. He's going to strip the ball. It's going to bounce. Just keeps getting tipped up. And did he get it? He got it. I think he got it. Good job by Cobb. Dropping into coverage right here. The App State defenders have done a really nice job today, even when a Warhawk seemingly has the catch. Wow. Yeah. They was... rip it free and they get out of there. With the football. But how about the concentration, though, from Harrington as the ball just keeps getting tipped to just have the wherewithal to, to haul that thing in, and he kind of turns his body as he goes to the ground to secure the catch, which is, which is a terrific job. Coach Viator knows what's coming. They're going to review this play, and they're going to give the ball to App State on the plus side of the field after his defense did a really good job getting a fourth down stop. They turn it over for the second time. Take a shot here. Sudden change. Peebles on first down. Gets about two yards on the play. App has been so consistent on the road. Of course, they very rarely lose at home either. They have done an amazing job since coming into the Sun Belt. They have won this league championship four years in a row. They're going for their fifth straight league. And as we mentioned at the top, when they were out of action for 26 days, that was the time where Louisiana and Coastal and all these other national headlines were being made by other teams in the league. A lot of people probably forgot about, hey, the, the championship trophy is sitting on the mountain in Boone. Here's Marcus Williams, and he gets ahead for a couple of yards. And I think everybody remembered the Marshall game. Yeah. And people thought, well, maybe App's having a down year. Uh-uh. They showed against Arkansas State 10 days ago. And they have not been perfect today by any stretch of the imagination. But you can just see how deep and how talented they are. To your point, though, Bill, I, I do think that this team wants a little bit, little bit of respect because they've been kind of under the radar for 26 days. Well, had forgot about App State. Hennigan went left. Zach threw it right. It's going to be fourth and six. I'd go for this. This is that gray area. There's no sense in punting this. What's the chance you're going to gain 15 yards net here, possibly? Well, the way their defense is playing and the way ULM's offense has struggled, what's the worst thing that happens is they get the ball on the 35, right? Exactly. Not so bad, but see if they can get it here. It's almost about six yards. Fourth down, they're two for two today. Three for three. And coming back. a flag back behind the line of scrimmage. It's likely coming back. Hey, speaking of the sub out, how about Coastal earlier today? Oh, goodness. They put it on Georgia State. Something something serious. That's going to back up. 
holding offense. Number 60, 10 yard penalty, replay, fourth down. Now you know a hand in the center that got called for it. Meanwhile, Ty Shelby, the defensive end, is injured for ULM. Let's take a look. Show right us here. where this happened, buddy. Right there. He's just going to grab him again right there, and he's going to not let go of Shelby. And it's going to come back, and we'll punt the football. We'll take a look at Shelby back in a moment in Monroe. Clemson without Trevor Lawrence fell behind BC, came back to win in a big way by six at home over the Eagles in the ACC. We've been mentioning the Ohio State Penn State game coming up tonight at 7:30. And how about the Cincinnati Bearcats finally knocking out Clem uh, knocking out Memphis, who uh, beat them twice last year? Yeah, that was a kind of a revenge game for the Bearcats. What, what a job Luke Fickle is doing with that team. Desmond Ritter at quarterback, their defense by uh, defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman. Nasty. To hold Memphis to 10 points today is very, very impressive and excited to see if they get, get a chance to keep moving up into the, into the top five maybe at some point. Xavier Sabach, who hasn't had a chance to punt all day long, finally gets on the field and does exactly what you want him to do. He lays it up down to the one-yard line. Nice job that by beautiful. App State's punting team. So, you know, you, you were – obviously you, you're going for it on fourth and five. You get it, but the uh, penalty brings you back. Great field position, though. Sabach, so by the way, his birthday is tomorrow. He turns 23. It's from uh, – Melbourne, right? Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. Last year, you know, he, he's so good at what he just did. Last year, he had 26 punts inside the 20, but that one was perfect. I mean, you want him to be your guy if you're having the closest to the pin competition. He put that one perfectly down to the one. So many good Aussie kickers out there. From the one, let's see how the Warhawks respond. Isaiah Phillips gets the ball out across the nine-yard line on first down. And Caden Smith's going to have to come out of the game for a play. His helmet comes off. Well, Phillips has had to carry the load today for ULM with the injury to Johnson. He's got 37 yards on 10 carries now for the day. Suits throws it quickly to Whitfield. And he'll run near the first down. Depends on where they spot it. They needed to get to the 11-yard line. That was Nicholas Ross that tracked him down. Well, if first down. ULM is going to want to get back in this game. They're going to have to start taking some shots down the field, which they've done. But it's tough. You know, those corners we've been talking about them so impressive on the outside. Maybe some shots down the middle of the field. Maybe try to work that post. You know, the score is 28 to seven. Doesn't it feel like it should be 35 or 42? Doesn't it seem yeah, like well, like App State's had some opportunities but hasn't put the ball in the end zone. And they've left that door open they for have. Monroe. There's some miscommunication there late as App State had to run a defender off the field. I'm not sure if he was supposed to be in the game or not, but... Warhawks recognize they go right back to the side where he was lined up. But this app defense has held them to 135 yards for the game. Second strong defensive game in a row for Coach Dale Jones' defensive unit. Suits to the air and he's sacked. That's the fourth sack of the day and the first for Frizzell. He's playing there. He's playing a lot today with uh, Nick Hampton being out. Frizzell gets the sack. Watch Frizzell inside. Just going to come late on a twist from his outside linebacker position. Get the sack. There's nowhere for, for suits to go. Frizzell's the oldest of seven siblings, by the way. That would be a fun Halloween night. He's a big brother. But they're way behind the sticks again now. Third and 11 for Colby Suits. 
It's a race to the quarterback. Suits gets it out of there, and he short hops. He is intended receiver Josh Peterson, who's been really quiet today. The terrific tight end for Monroe. The game kind of feel like it just kind of come to a little bit of a halt here. Both teams just spinning their tires a little bit. Even App State, they've, they've had so much success running the football and the big chunk plays. But the last 10 minutes of this quarter, it's been spent right here between, you know, ULM's 40 and 40 yard line and, and, and goal line for both teams. With no points being scored. Right, That's a right. tremendous punt. It takes a big old hop to Malik Williams. Now he's got some time to run it back. And Malik Williams gets knocked down right on the 50, right in the middle of the field. He was thinking, I am going to run this all the way back. What a tackle by Hunter Smith on that play. 42 just comes down there. If he doesn't make that tackle, it's, it's uh, six points. I think so, He's too. He's going to bang his head on the goalpost. Great tackle. He a little, dang a little dangerous. Uh -huh. As he cuts back, right here, 42 is going to come out of nowhere and just knife him down. Takes a little shot from his teammate there, too, but that's a pretty good job on special teams by the junior linebacker. The punt goes for 63 yards. That is why Daniel Sparks had a big smile on his face. From the 50-yard line, Thomas. Five-yard pickup on first down to Thomas Hennigan. You can tell, by the way, that he's still not at 100%. He has a hamstring injury. Yeah. He's been such an amazing player. Young man from Greensboro. He's had an incredible career. He still leads the team with 20 yards per catch as an average. So that's pretty impressive. And the thing that uh, Sean Clark said about him is, is he always comes up with the deep ball every time. Here's Marcus Williams. He gets ahead of the 41-yard line. Jerry and Jenkins to play defensively. This is the second game in a row that Thomas has set a career high in rushing. Yep. Over 100 yards today after 82 against Arkansas State. What a tremendous advantage that is when you have <laughs> the four backs they have plus a quarterback that can get you 100 yards. That's why they average over almost, what, 300 yards a game, 278? Going to go higher than that here today. That'll be enough for another first down to Marcus Williams, Jr. Jabari Johnson made the play. 284 rushing yards today now for the Mountaineers. But still a quarter to go. I'll tell you, as this uh, ULM defense has kind of settled in, they played a lot better here in the second half. And they really have. I mean, they're, they're, I know they're kind of gashing for five yards a pop or whatever on the ground, but still, I mean, they're making some plays on some deep balls and, and getting off the field. Under a minute to go, and Thomas to the air. Floats it to the right, and incomplete. Now, for the most part, he's done really well today floating the football, though he's hobbling around a little bit. You know, when he first came in, they called him Bam Bam. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because he was just throwing rockets all the time as a freshman back to that Penn State game. But they knew if he could learn the changeup, right? Right. Well, they said the velocity on his deep ball or post or slant or five-yard out was all fastballs. And he had to take a little bit off that. He's learned to kind of develop a little bit of touch as he's progressed here at App State. But his teammates don't call him Bam Bam anymore. Here is Williams Jr. running again, the senior out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, brought down by Holly as we turn under 40 seconds to go in the quarter. And it's another third down opportunity for the Monroe defense to come up with a stop and get off the field. Or do you go for it on fourth down? Same spot they were in last time. You pick up a couple yards here. And you'll have a quarter to think about it, a quarter break. Mountaineers are three of six today on third down. And Thomas to the air once more. Has some room to run. Gets a terrific block. Reads it beautifully and has the first down. 
Mike Evans, the tight end on the left side. A beautiful block in the, the third quarter. quarter. After three, Thomas and App State looking to stay atop their division in the Sun Belt. They've got a 28-7 lead thanks to number 12 who does it all for the kids from Boone. Hansville College football update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. What do you think, Dusty? Well, I think that Boston College led that game 28-10 at one point, 24 unanswered by the Tigers. And uh, with their freshman quarterback, you know, played pretty well. First game without Trevor Lawrence. They get Notre Dame next to the Clemson Tigers. Fourth quarter begins with Williams on the run, running hard to the right side. Meanwhile, Georgia got the win at the Kentucky. This is a big win for the Dogs because they get the Gators next. So when you look at that, think yeah, about what's coming up next. Clemson has Notre Dame. Georgia has Florida next. Here's the problem, though. 14 points of offense. I know Kentucky's defense is, is, is decent. Yeah. But, you know, Dogs fans aren't going to be too happy with that number. 14 points. I know you get the win. 14 isn't going to beat the Gators next week, is it? And it's not going to beat them. And it's not going to beat the Gators. It's not going to beat many teams, by the way. <laughs> it will beat ULF. They average 13 points. I thought they do. Third and four for App State. Opening minute of the final period. A pump fake to the left for Zach Thomas. And a sack, another stop for the ULM defense. you got to tip your hat to how hard you they're playing. You absolutely do. I mean, their, their defense is, is not giving up. They're down 28-7 the fourth quarter of a, a game that feels like it's been, you know, should be like 42-7. Austin still, Holly still with playing, the sack. Still playing hard. Got to give them credit, absolutely. And so a field goal opportunity now for the Mountaineers, and Chandler Staten is their senior kicker out of Gainesville, Florida. Ironically enough, it'll be a 38-yarder. The holder is Clayton Howe. Christian Johnstone is the snapper for Sean Clark's team. In the air, and good. And so App adds to its lead as Staten, who missed his first two field goal attempts of the year, has now hit three in a row, and App State leads it 31 to seven. Mountaineers on their way to yet another road win to stay atop the Sun Belt. Early going in quarter number four, the Warhawks and the App State Mountaineers in Sun Belt action. Game two of a Sun Belt triple header this afternoon for you. The field goal makes it a 31-7 game. And Monroe will get the ball back here with a chance to make a rally in the twilight here in northeastern Louisiana. From the six, a fair catch called for that time for Isaiah Phillips. Well, our next MLS Soccer Sunday, it is an Eastern Conference matchup. Playoff positioning, the third place, Columbus Crew hosts first place, Philadelphia Union tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. ABC, ESPN Deportes, and of course, the ESPN app. Major League Soccer presented by Audi. Columbus Crew, Philadelphia Union. Jeremy Hunt's going to come back into the game at quarterback. Junior from Illinois. As Coach Vitor looks for some sort of offensive spark, it's not going to come there because the Mountaineers were coming full speed ahead inside. And like Hagler got his hands in the air to knock that one down. Oh, what they were trying to do is set up a little slip screen on the outside, the Warhawks were. And they let everyone go. Watch up front. They're going to let all these guys come through free. And they try to get the screen over here to the left, right there. And it does a good job, the defensive front there, getting their paws on the football. From the 25, they're still looking for answers. That'll be Isaiah Phillips ahead for a couple of yards. And DeMarco Jackson brings him down.
long day for that young man. Probably came into the game thinking he's going to get two or three carries. He's had to carry the, the load. And after Josh Johnson yeah. went down in the first quarter after a long run, starting tailback and the workhorse tailback for ULM. Hunt on third down and seven, has his man, and it is caught by Bloomfield. Sophomore receiver has the first down out to the 38-yard line. Now, let me tell you about this young man, Katie Texas. He comes from a long line of Jamaican sprinters. His family is all about track and running as fast as he can. Yeah, and so is he. He's pretty fast. He's a former state champion on the... 4 by 200 meter relay team. So Bluefield says to the family, this running fast is great, but look, <laughs> we, can add a, we can add a football to it. That's right. Yeah, he it's can really fly. Worked out well for him. Two sports star and is excelling at both. They try to set up the screen again, and that time Bluefield had to throw the block for Perry Carter, and the Mountaineers will have none of it. That's Sean Jolly in there. They have the answer on defense for just about anything Monroe has tried to dial up today. And, and Jolly's you know, taking on a block out there on the edge. And, and the stock blocks are tough to get off of. It's a skill. These guys are great cover corners, but they're really well, uh, well done tackling. I mean, both of the, these guys have done a terrific job on the outside. Hunt tries to go with a little back shoulder throw, but again, Nothing doing there. Gene Charles had perfect coverage on the play. When the receiver can't get any separation at all downfield, Look at this, this coverage. is basically what has happened all day, right? You mirror the man, and you turn your head back. Get your head back around exactly perfect. Right? That is clinic quality technique by Shamar Gene Charles on the outside. Love that. Showing the corner blitz. They're just 5 for 12 on third downs, but they've had a lot of these, haven't they, Dustin? Third and longs. They're in zone now. And that's going to be picked off on the 45-yard line. Third interception of the day by the App State defense, and the first for Ryan Huff. Boy, the pressure on this play up front from Jordan Earl. The big nose tackle. 6'2", 300 pounds. There's 99 coming with the pressure, but you, you got to see, he, he twisted around, and for a, a fella, 300 pounds, 6'2", he was moving, big time. Forces him to throw off his back foot. Great job getting the foot down. And that's a pick. It has been a defensive clinic today for App State. Sweeney made that play defensively on Peoples. Well, I know, you know Zach Thomas watching his body language as he walked off the field after the last drive when they got the field goal. They were stopped on third down. Takes his helmet off in frustration you know they, they still want to score touchdowns they want their offense to be efficient this is nate noel you can tell he's got some fresh legs and he's a hard kid to bring down from miami's northwestern high school he's small but explosive the most explosive back on this team you can tell he's got fresh legs well, you got to be explosive at, at that size at 22 touchdowns as a senior here in Miami, and look, keeps churning. He's the fourth back today to play for Sean and Sean Clark and the App State offense. Play fake this time, and Thomas on the rollout. Let's it go, and a diving attempt, and it's incomplete. Laying out. Just couldn't hang on to it. It's a tough throw to make. He's on the run. He's getting pressure. And it was pretty good coverage there. It was Austin Hawley out there.
From the 42, Noel has this carry once more. He gets ahead for about four yards on the second down play. And he'll get a breather. Well, Noel. They've done such a really good job of recruiting and doing The coaches said, you know, we're kind of out of the way in a way, but when we can get a kid to campus, when we can get a young man to Boone, we usually can close the deal on it. They recruit speed and culture, Sean Clark said to us. They'll turn down a guy if they feel like he's more talented but doesn't have the right attitude or work ethic. Well, that's the Jerry Moore model. There's no doubt about that. Here's Harrington on third down. He gets ahead for a couple of yards. Coach Moore, of course, was the legendary coach at App State. Absolutely. And they'll keep the offense out there, as they've done pretty much all afternoon inside the 35-yard line on fourth and five or less. They're one for two today on fourth downs. Fourth down, Thomas, that was a beautiful fake, and he dumps it off beautifully. Harrington has the first down, and he's out of bounds. Down to about the 24. When Clark was uh, brought back this year, one of the first things he did in, in a practice, they had gone through 12 periods of practice. And this is early in the season. And he didn't like the way it was going, so he stopped and he made him stretch again to start over after 12 periods of practice. And his staff said, you know what, Coach Moore did that same thing. He says, yeah, I remember, that's why I did it. That's why he did it, yeah. I can remember days in college where the, you'd be, like you said, you need 10 periods in, which means you're, you're almost halfway through practice to start it over. Noel has the first down carry, gets ahead for a yard, midway through this fourth quarter. But that's the culture. That's what you're it talking is. about. And regardless of who the coach has been, regardless of who the play callers have been, and they've had some good ones yes, they at have. App State. Uh, it, it's a power-running football team, and it's a tough physical football team on both sides of the ball. So Coach Moore didn't sugarcoat anything. I love that. Honesty with your players, with, with your coaching staff. From the 24, Zach flips it nicely to Mike Evans. The young man from Jacksonville gets down to about the 18-yard line, and Tyler Glass makes the play defensively. The free safety for Monroe. This is just a methodical drive. Yeah, they're trying to take as much time off the clock. Get on the plane, get back to Boone, still atop the league. Lots of football to be left. It's a conference play now. Mm -hmm. Third and two. Noel stretches and gets to the 15. About half a yard short. They're going to say one. It's, it's about a half a yard. Half a yard. So they're going to bring in Peoples for the fourth down play. App today is 2-4-3 on fourth down. I don't know how gassed those defensive linemen have to be up front. They've been on the field, it seems like, all afternoon. Fourth and short, and Peoples gets the first down to the 11. And that'll stop the clock momentarily. Well, when the offense only has 100 and what is it? Mike, our, our statistician here, they have 150 yards of total offense. In 2020, you don't see that very often. But that's an amazing job by a defensive coordinator to hold a team to regardless of who you're playing. They've done a terrific job. Dale coming back after spending a season with Coach Satterfield at uh, Louisville. App can get a first down uh, at the one. 
Here's Noel on first down, and he spins to the 10, and it will be second down. Well, he was at Louisville for a year and decided to come back. Yep. He had, he's an app guy. I mean, he he spent 23 years in Boone with that program. And he says, you know, this is home to us. It's a great place to raise my family. I love it here. And I think the, you know, you never know what's going to happen, but you get the same vibe with Sean Clark. That this, this isn't going to be a job. He says, as long as they'll keep me, I'll stay. That's right. But it, but it, you, have a, you have a sense that Clark isn't going to be sending resumes out and put feelers on. No, he almost he talks like he could stay here his entire life. Louisiana Monroe is going to call a timeout. I think more Dustin, they're just gassed on defense. That O-line has been pounded on the Hawks. We'll step aside back in a moment. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Peloton. Millions of reasons, one community. We're back in Monroe. This is the museum. You know, this is where Soda Pop was born. Monroe, Louisiana. They figured out how to put CO2 in a bottle with some Coke syrup. And Soda Pop was born right here in Monroe, Louisiana. And they have the museum. You can get a nickel for Coke. Still that cheap? Yeah. That's right. At the museum. Want to go? Maybe next trip. Okay. <laughs> I got to get home. You got to get home. That's right. This is a beautiful area. This has been my first trip to uh, Monroe, Louisiana. I've been in, in this state a lot, but it's so scenic here. The water, oh, yeah. the, the, the fishing here would just be incredible. What a great dinner. Oh, boy. Did we have On a the dinner water. last night? In the water. Cajun and Creole food. Second down. During the timeout, there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called against uh, App State. So we have second and 23 on the 24. Unusual situation again. App can get a first down on the one. And it will be third down. Anderson Castle, he's a young man, a freshman from Boone, North Carolina. Have you been to Boone? I've not been to Boone. I hear it's an incredible town. Spectacular. In the uh, mountains of North Carolina. Love to make a trip there sometime to call a game. College town, right? Yeah, so much, so much to do there. Yep. Third down and 22 on the 23. They're going to run it again. The young man from Boone gets thrown down. Well, again... It has been a really rough day, and it's been a rough, candidly, 10 weeks for Louisiana Monroe, going back to preseason camp. They've had COVID. They've had opt-outs. They had a hurricane. I mean, if anything could go wrong, but effort has been there, even in a lopsided yeah. game here in the fourth quarter. They're getting great effort out of that defense. They're playing their butts off for you know, the entire second half, still making big plays. You know, App was kind of gashing in there for a while, but they really bowed up here. The last couple drives. Staten's going to try officially. This will be a 43 yarder. This will be his season long if he can connect. But he doesn't. This is wide left. And it remains 31 7. App State with the lead back in Monroe. Coming up in a moment. back in Monroe 238 to go in the game now let's take a look at Big penalty, too. Backed him up. And they missed the field goal, but they 
they churned it out for 14 plays. But Monroe has done candidly exceptionally well. They've allowed just 10 points in the second half. Suits back in the game. That's a first down throw. Ahead to the 37-yard line with exactly two minutes remaining in the time uh, in the game. McNeil made the play defensively. Unfortunately for Coach V and his Warhawks, this game followed the script of just about every game they've played this season. Fall behind by two touchdowns early, try to fight your way back into it, injuries, and then have an opportunity to score, and then something goofy happens. But the reason goofy things happen is App State played an amazing game defensively. They played a fantastic game. You knew coming in they're going to score 30-some points. Delay a game. Defense. Disconcerting signals. Be a five-yard penalty. First down. I heard that called earlier today in the uh, the Michigan-Michigan State game as well. So what what exactly is that? What are, What is the defender yelling to try to you try, you're, 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 do there? You're trying to basically – throw off the center, like you're yelling something hard, like a hard count. You might say shift or something right as the ball's about to be snapped, and it can throw off the center, and of course that's it's not allowed. And maybe emphasized today as we've seen it, I've saw, seen it now twice uh, this afternoon. Colby Suits throws this one short, and as we've seen all day long, the App State defenders, they're like wasps swarming around the football. No gain on the play. That was Jordan Michael and uh, Jordan Haley making the play defensively. Loss of a yard, a minute 19 to go for the Warhawks. On the slant, Malik Jackson gets the first down to the 45-yard line. Suits over the middle. This is the best he's thrown the ball all day, albeit late now in the final minute of the game. And mostly backups in for Appalachian State. Mountaineers will go to 4-1 and one and stay unbeaten, 2-0 and oh in the Sun Belt. And the winless season will continue for another week for the Warhawks. Again, it was uh, Mitchell in there. He and Haley making the play defensively. And a timeout now with 25 seconds timeout. left in the game. ULM. We will step First aside. Our timeout. final break of the day. Out. We have a timeout. Up in. Now let's take a look at today's protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. And what a job App State's secondary has done today. You talk about protection. That secondary closed the door on ULM. Yeah, they're protecting the back end. Shamar Gene Charles and Sean Jolly, the two terrific cornerbacks here for App State. You see uh, Brendan Harrington, the outside linebacker. Ryan Huff, their safety, both had interceptions in this game. I just thought the defense was suffocating and really did not allow anywhere for uh, the Warhawks to go down the field. They just didn't. Well, the Warhawks call timeout. They're trying to score. The app's going to bring its first well, team defense back in. Yeah. <laughs> I was Jolly gonna, and Gene Charles. I was just going to point that out. Yeah, they thought their day was done, but if, uh, They don't want to give up another touchdown. Mm -mm. There's a sense of pride in, in, in holding your opponent under double digits. Here is Suits to throw once again. The rush comes. Suits is going to throw it away. 16 seconds left. And it will be third down and eight from the 27. They rush three, they drop eight. 
Suits against that zone, throws it short. That will be enough for the first down. It'll stop the clock for a minute. With nine seconds left to move the sticks, Harrington made the play. Now the clock will run as they reset the sticks, and they'll spike it. And chance for one more play now for Viator and his team. I'm sure Sean Clark's like, let's just get out of here. But for Coach Viator, it's an opportunity for you to, to get some more reps in with your young quarterback and uh, try to get some, some points on the board here and maybe build a little momentum um, before next week's game. Well, candidly, this has been one of their more impressive drives of the game. After it the no, it has been, absolutely. This will be the last play. Last play of the game, barring a penalty for ULM. Suits to the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown. That's a touchdown. End of the game. Malik Jackson made the sliding grab. 31-13. No extra point. Game over. Game is over. Impressive win for Appalachian State and the Mountaineers come into Monroe, take care of business. I'm sure they would like to you know, have a couple things back. Coach Clark's uh, talking to Matt Vietor about what happened there at the end of the first half. He was pointing down to the end zone. I think he's still a little bit uh, bitter about that situation because he thought he should have some more time before the end of the first half. So, Billy, it was a fun one. Happy Halloween. And to you as well. Another win on the road for Appalachian State. They continue to get it done. And another tough game for ULM as their winless season continues. Well, it's time now for the AT&T 5G best moment from today. Dustin, as you recall the game, what was the best moment you saw today? Well, goodness, I'd probably say just the, the way Zach Taylor threw the football. The trigger ration on Trick or Treat Saturday, Halloween. It pays off for App State as they get the touchdown there. You see the flea flicker gets the defense to bite. And then they find Christian Wells for the touchdown. Zach Thomas had a heck of an afternoon. Teams meet at midfield as we wrap things up. All right, App State, hey, this is two games in a row now. They have shown what they can do. Uh, if you talk about the Sun Belt, you better talk about the four-time defending champs, huh? Here's my thought. Uh -huh. November 21st at Coastal Carolina. That's going to be a good one. Ooh, sure Sun Belt is on notice for the shot to clears in the Mountaineers. On the surf turf. Well, that'll do it today from Monroe. Again, the final score, App State 31, ULM 13. Coming up at 8 on ESPNU, another Sun Belt battle. For Dustin Fox, I'm Bill Roth saying so long from Monroe, Louisiana.